So I wanted to talk a little bit about something me and my friend Alex were talking about a couple of days ago, just about video games and how they fit into our lives differently as we've gotten older. Uh, when I was younger, I, I didn't put a whole lot of thought into what made the difference between a good video game and, and a bad one, which I think was partly because I was too young to really uh, understand the difference. But I think it might have also had something to do with the fact that uh, my choices in video games were somewhat more limited than they are now. Uh, because uh, most of my games came from my parents or my grandparents uh, and, and what they chose to get me for, for Christmas and, and birthdays and stuff like that. And, and so I would play games like Super Mario Brothers, which I, I have played as an adult and and still think is a brilliant piece of game design and I would play games like that with equal excitement as games like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure which I've also played as an adult and it's a frustrating piece of crap um, it's just it's it's a bad game with with a popular license slapped on top of it but but when I was younger I, I, I loved both of those games equally. I loved all my games equally um, because that was what I had and I think I was just I was just happy that my parents were giving me the opportunity to play video games at all. And then when I got into high school and college and was more able to afford games uh, for myself I became a lot more aware of the difference between good games and bad games, um, mostly because that's what that's what controlled my decisions on on what to buy. I had a limited budget, and I wanted to make sure that whatever I did buy would be something that would keep me entertained for for weeks or or months at a time. A game like Halo Two is a good example. Uh, that that game I bought. The day it came out and played it off and on for years, I think, pretty much until uh, I got my 360. Um, but now, as as more or less of an adult, I've got a lot more responsibilities. I've got a full time job, a wife who needs attention, and and a house to take care of. And when I get some free time and energy from those things, I like to do some game developing. So, so when purchasing a video game, uh, I look more than the cost of the game itself at the amount of time it will take me to fully appreciate it. A good example is, is the game uh, Mass Effect 2, which I've heard nothing but good things about. Uh, I actually played the demo a couple days ago, and, and I really liked it. It looks really cool. It looks like they did a fantastic job with it. But I played the first Mass Effect, and I know how much time you have to invest into that game to fully appreciate it. There's a lot of story there. They did a really great job. It's just a lot of time needs to go into that game for you to get everything you can out of it. And it's for that reason that I haven't picked it up yet. And um, and if I do, I don't know. I don't know when. Um, contrary to that is a game like Limbo which I just played through a few nights ago and and I love it because it's it's got a, a brilliant art design uh, the puzzles are challenging and fun they're challenging enough and fun and and it, the game is short I can pretty much devour the game completely in about two or three afternoons which which I can really appreciate now because my time is a lot more limited. There are some exceptions, um, like New Vegas. When that comes out, I'm going to be buying it, and that will be all I play for a few months um, because I think Fallout is awesome, and, and the Bethesda RPG style of game is, is just my favorite. And... Um, and yeah, 